Picture this, your calendar is overflowing and there's not enough time in the day to get everything done. There's too much on your plate and you're already feeling spread too thin. No amount of coffee can help you feel energized enough to do it all and you're running on fumes. Ouch. We've all been there at some point or another, right? Leave me a comment or an emoji down below if you have. I know I have. Yes. Even a time management coach like me who knows how to prioritize and be productive has gotten too busy and exhausted. Overwhelm happens, y'all. And sometimes when it happens, we have no choice but to work through it. In this video, I'm gonna share a few steps on dealing with overwhelm. And be sure to keep watching to the end so you can find out how to avoid overwhelm like this in the future. Hey there, I'm time management coach Anna Dearman Cornick here to help you stop feeling overwhelmed and start spending time on what matters most. This happens all the time to us, doesn't it? You get really excited and say yes to a lot of amazing ideas and opportunities. You see opportunities to grow your business or grow in your career by taking on more projects and responsibilities. You see opportunities to expand your skill set or learn something new. So you add something to your calendar and then you add something else. And before you know it, your calendar or your planner is bursting at the seams with meetings and appointments and deadlines and lunches and coffee dates and courses. You name it, you've got it. Whether you've said yes to a lot of things that you want to do, or you've said yes to a lot of things out of obligation, or maybe a combination of both, the result is the same. You're feeling overbooked, overwhelmed and exhausted, but you've already committed so people are relying on you. So let's clear your calendar and find some relief. What's your first move? It's hitting that subscribe button. Just kidding, but that's so important to helping others find the channel and plus seeing new subscribers just makes my heart so happy. The first thing you should do when you realize you're overcommitted and overwhelmed, accept it. No need to beat yourself up or talk negatively to yourself. If you're overwhelmed, you're already more likely to feel irritable or be hard on yourself. You don't have the time or the space to recharge and you can easily take that out on other people. Simply admit that you're overwhelmed first. It can feel really validating. By admitting it, you're also recognizing that something needs to change, which brings us to step two. Next, I want you to make a list of all of your moving projects. A moving project or a project in motion, as I sometimes call it, is anything in your life that requires a number of steps to complete and requires a substantial amount of your time and energy. It's different from a task, which is a one and done commitment. I've actually talked about the difference between a project and a task in one of my podcast episodes, because knowing the difference can help you write a better to-do list. I'll link that episode for you in the description below. Plus, it's also important to remember that a moving project is one that you've already started and is currently in progress. So I want you to make a list of all of the projects that fall in that category. Let's start with work. Depending on what you do, you can sort your moving projects by projects you're managing or supporting, projects by accounts or client type, projects by service, industry, or topic, projects by frequency or deadline. One of my examples is monthly group coaching inside the It's About Time Academy. Every third Thursday of the month, Academy members gather to ask questions and get time management support. If you'd like to join us inside of the Academy, I'd love to welcome you in. I've dropped the link down below in the description so you can check it out and join us for the next Next coaching session. Next, I'd like you to add personal projects to the list. This could be things like home renovation, volunteer responsibilities, or planning a family vacation. Or it could be taking online courses or making different career moves, even though that kind of involves work too. Personal projects can definitely add to our total overwhelm too, even if they're things we want to do. They make an impact on your overwhelm just as much as your work moving projects do. All done? Take a look at your list. How many moving projects are on it? Studies have shown that overwhelm from work has more to do with the number of different projects you're working on than the number of hours you spend working. So if your attention is constantly being pulled in a dozen different directions and you're not making progress, it's not because you're slacking or need to put in more effort. It's because you have so much to do that it feels like you're not doing enough. This is a real thing. Context switching, which I talk about alongside multitasking on an episode of the podcast, is where you switch from 
project to project or thing to thing. Click that link in the description box to learn more about it. Every time you switch what you're doing, you lose focus because a part of your brain is actually still thinking about the task that you just switched from. Your focus suffers, and then your productivity suffers, and then your to-do list suffers. But all that is about to change for the better. We're halfway through. Are you still with me? You've got this. Let's move on to step three. Now we prioritize. This is my favorite part. Let's begin with the work side of your list of projects because chances are you may not have as much control or as much wiggle room with those. We're working with the assumption here that you can't cut or offload anything, that you've got to make it all happen because it's too late to eliminate, automate, or delegate. This is where you've got to get ruthless, my friend. You're going to arrange your work list by priority First, move any projects without a deadline to the bottom of your list. Then rank or rearrange your remaining moving projects in order of the most recent deadline. Now, look at your moving project with the most urgent deadline. What are the steps needed for you to reach that deadline? Write those down. Move on to the next project on your list. What has to happen to reach that deadline? Write those down and so on and so on. By the way, if you want to learn more about the prioritizing side of time management, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I have lots more to say on it. As you're capturing the steps needed to reach your deadline, you might realize that some of your steps require communication, collaboration with your colleagues, coworkers, clients, or some form of approval. This can affect how long it'll take you to get something done. If you're a perfectionist, I know this can be tough. But remember, we're working through overwhelm here. Done is better than perfect when you're in emergency mode. Now, I'm not telling you to do the bare minimum all the time. Absolutely not. But sometimes when things come down to the wire, you've got to be honest with yourself about what's necessary versus what's nice to have. Okay, you've taken care of your professional moving projects. Now let's look at the personal side. First, I want you to scan the list and see what can go. It's painful, I know, but you're overwhelmed. You are not living your best life right now. You have to let go of some things so you can show up better in the places that matter most. Let's cut out those obligations that are nice to have, but not necessary. Volunteer positions, for example. I know it's tough, but you need to be true to yourself and to the organization you wanna support. Let's say that you need to step down from a volunteer role. Express gratitude for the opportunity, share that you're not able to give it the time that it deserves, and suggest a potential solution. Maybe you can refer someone else for the role or remain open to possibilities. Then, if and only if you truly have the time to commit, offer to be involved in a smaller capacity. All right, back to your list. What should be left at this point are the things that you really want to do or can't let go of like a bathroom renovation. That needs to be finished unless you wanna live in a half-finished bathroom. Or your kiddo's birthday party. They're counting on you and you've already invited their friends. Canceling would be terrible. It's time to ask for help. I know, this can be as tough as stepping down from an obligation, but remember, you're overwhelmed. If you can't cancel it and you can't step down and it needs to get done, it's time to call in reinforcements. This might look like ordering party decorations and supplies from Etsy instead of making them yourself. It could also look like hiring someone to finish the renovation you were trying to DIY so you can focus on other things. Leaning on others for help when you're overwhelmed doesn't make you weak. You're human. So ask for help when you need it. All right, you're working hard, my friend, and you are almost at the finish line. I know for a fact that you're tired right now because I've been in your position before. You've done a lot of mental gymnastics to make it all work. It can be so tempting, but when you're working through the overwhelm, avoid doing these things next. Overfueling on coffee to get to the finish line. You'll probably end up feeling jittery, more anxious, and less focused. Staying up late, and waking up early to get it done. Sacrificing sleep won't help you get anything done better or faster. Don't forget to drink water. Stay hydrated. Drink a glass of ice water instead of another cup of coffee when you feel your energy start to get low. Definitely don't keep it all to yourself. Talk to someone. 
Let someone support you, cheer you on, and take things off your plate if they can. While our to-do lists will probably be never ending, this rough time will pass. You will get to the other side and you will feel that relief. And hopefully you'll vow to never end up in that situation again. Now that you've accepted that you're overwhelmed, created timelines to fulfill your work obligations, stepped down where you can and asked for help, how can you avoid doing this ever again? It's all about your vision, values, and goals. When you know what you want out of life, it's easier to decide what fits into that vision. And when you know your values, it's even easier to know what to say yes to and what to say no to. Plus, you just feel it in your gut. When you know your goals, you can keep your task list in check and you can prevent overwhelm by having the right number of goals. I recommend keeping it between two and three major goals and having no more than five to seven at a time. I hope this video helped see you through a difficult period of overwhelm. Even if we do all we can to avoid overwhelm, it can still happen. But with the right tools and prevention, you can manage your commitments and your time better. How do you deal with those overwhelming days? How do you keep your to-do list at a manageable level? I'd love to know, so tell me in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you there.